We did seven cookie sheets full of the slices. So now we're going to transfer them to giant zipper bags and put them back in the freezer to await their turn in the freeze dryer. And because peaches are so sugary, they stay a little bit flexible even when they're frozen at regular freezer temperatures because these were nice and ripe. And I do want to kind of pop them apart if I can so that they're ready for the trays. But maybe I should just leave them like this and chuck them on trays. Anyway, so I want to handle them as little as possible. So I'll probably leave them pretty big chunks. And I'm not sure how we're going to put them on the freeze dryer trays yet. I don't know if we'll layer them uh, or shingle them or exactly what. But we'll get these in there quickly. This is the one that I ran out of the sill pads, so had to use parchment. I used two layers of it to help make sure that it wouldn't get stuck to the pan. Seriously sugary juices on those. I'm gonna get that as full as I can before I move it on. That goes back into the freezer to wait its turn. So definitely gonna break some of the pieces by doing it this. But I put them pretty tightly packed onto these trays. Not like individually quick frozen kind from the store. But I was trying to cram them full because I knew I only had space for seven trays in the freezer. The timing is pretty good. My sister's machine is empty right now and I've got at least 20 pounds of peaches. So my machine is doing a batch of peaches right now and finishing up and I'll be starting a new one as soon as that's defrosted or tomorrow morning depending on how I feel this afternoon. But anyway, I can get a batch started to my sister's right away. So we're going to load up the trays and then go bring them over to her machine and get them in there. So I'm using a batch or a set of her trays so I don't have the regular tear weights on those so I'll have to write those down as I go. So let's get those onto trays and I'm going to try to get the same net weight on both batches so that I can compare. This first batch they did was only just barely over six pounds because I wasn't really paying attention and the ones that I had shingled on the trays I thought for sure would be stuck together uh, without being able to come apart without breaking. They seem to come apart fine. If I need to I'll shingle these up or I'll just double stack them. So I'm not sure which way is going to be best. So let's get them on the trays. So my sister's trays weigh different amounts than mine. So we will get tear weights for each one of them as we go and then get peaches on them. All right. So tray one is 660. That's a hundred, uh, 90, almost about 94 grams lighter than my tray one. I'll start with this little bags that we put aside and we'll load them up. And I want to get about two and a half pounds. So I need about 1794 to have the total weight that I want for two and a half pounds. Oops, come on. Starts to get humidity on there and starts to curl up. Kind of get a layer spread out there to hold the paper down. So I can go two layers if I need to. And we'll see how much we have. So I need to go 600 and some grams still. Get that set on a towel so they don't um, warm up from the contact with the tray or with the workbench. So trying to do a fast game of food Tetris with the frozen food and I know I'm going to have to go two layers to get the amount that I want on the tray. And I'm not worried about the two layers. It will just take longer to freeze dry and I can live with that. Again, I want a comparison between the two machines and it is better to not overload them. Let's see what we've got so far. Still need more than 200 more grams if I want the full two and a half pounds. And I kind of do. And I'm not going to worry if I can't get two and a half pounds on a tray because if it gets ridiculous I'll just stop and I think we're pretty close to that level right now. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. So 1768 and 1768 so it's a little bit less than two and a half pounds but that's a good number. I'm going to tuck a thermometer in here trying to get it between a couple of peaches. That should work and we'll get the other trays. 
So the 659, almost identical. Same thing. We'll get those loaded on there as quickly as I can. Because I don't want these things thawing out. Okay, how far do we have so far? Over 1,200. And that, of course, includes the tray. So that means there's only about 600 grams of peaches on there. And we'll get a second layer on there real quick. Let's see what we're at now. Oh, that one's too tall. 1774. That's pretty good. Let's see if we can get another little piece or two in there. In kind of these holes. 1796. And the thermometer. Okay, tray three. And when I say tray three, they're actually numbered on these trays. 658. Boy, her trays are really close to the same. I didn't weigh the amount of peaches I have. I may not have enough because I only have one other big bag. Okay, I better stop putting so much on the trays. Unless I want to process some more peaches, and that would be a different set of peaches, so that would be make a variable that I don't want. So I'm not going to put as many on these others because I want to not run out. 1445. I should have weighed the bag of peaches. So I have to make some adjustments because this is all I have to work with still. So 3400. So I better make sure I have enough. It's going to be really close if I do it just how I have them loaded. So I'm not going to change that. I should have weighed them first to find out how much I had to work with and done half of them. Shucks, I did not pay attention. Okay, well, we're going to go with that. So this one's only 13.29. Now we'll get these over to my sister's freeze dryer. So my sister's machine has been pre-cooling for about an hour and a half. It's nice and cool. It's about as cool as it will get before it starts turning on the little heaters in there to prevent it from getting overly cold for some reason. Mine will just keep dropping and dropping until it's maxed out on the amount of cooling that it can do. Anyway, we'll get those in there and we'll see how that compares because we'll be starting a similar load on mine uh, later today or tomorrow morning. Unfortunately, I didn't pre-weigh the, all the peaches that I had left to find out how many I had and so I could have evened them out. Um, so the trays are kind of uneven. I'll put the fullest trays in the middle two spots no matter which tray number they are. Taxi! And get this in there. So the lightest one was tray four and I'll put it at the bottom. Tray three was the next lightest. I'll put it at the top. So tray one and two were definitely the heaviest. And I'll put those in the middle two spots where they have the most heating. Okay, I've got the thermometers in there, got everything set. And I'd put the plastic disc in there now, but I haven't made it for her, even though it's been uh, going on a year now. So I'll have to take care of that because that's just plain wrong. We'll be back in this one in probably two days because it is a little bit faster than mine, but it's not massively faster. It's probably 10 to 20% faster, which is a big deal if you're trying to crank through batches. For us, it really doesn't matter because we simply don't get back to it in time to be able to move through that next batch without a lot of extra time anyway, because we just don't make it down. Let's see, I think we can continue on hers because now we press continue, right? And then it will continue freezing. Okay, so we'll press continue. And we have the anti-touch screen screen. Crane valve is closed. It says it's freezing. Everything looks good. As far as I know, we'll be back in about two days. So don't go away. It'll be just a second. So getting ready for the next batch. I'll get some parchment pieces. And I have rolls of the parchment that have been cut to length or to width. And then I can cut them to length when I need them. And then I've got a stack of them cut to length right here. So I'll get four of them out for the four trays. And we have the other scale in here. 
some zip bags, uh, more gloves, and then up here we have some of the different size bags. So we have the quart bags, the pint bags, and then the two quart bags underneath the pints, then oxygen absorbers. We have the small, the 100 cc oxygen absorbers and the 500 in amongst the bags. So um, in with these, these are the ones we use the most. So we keep a whole box of those. And I've got tape in case we need to tape labels on, scissors for opening the bags, uh, cups in case we want to use scooping method to fill the, the Mylar bags. Then on the bottom, we have more bags, the, the two quart bags, some boxes with small amounts of other bags, more gloves here, and a lot more parchment over here waiting to be cut up. We also have the flexible cutting boards that we can use for help filling bags, a big canning funnel, and the scoop. And this scoop I want to change a little bit. Might do something that pretty soon. We'll get the trays and the peaches ready and the freeze dryers already setting and waiting. These are some of those bags from batch 637 from yesterday. And I just wanted to leave those out before I put them on the shelf so you can kind of see. Uh, somebody had a question about how do the labels work out once the bag starts to shrink and get all wrinkly. And they seem to be doing quite well. Again, I don't know long term how this type of label will work. I would really like to use color laser labels, but I'd like to have a small printer that's close to my bagging area for that. And these are really inexpensive and I can still, even if these fail and all the information disappears, I still have this felt pen number on here, which I can refer back to my information sheet and I'll have all the information about what this bag is won't be catastrophic if the label fails, but it does seem like it's going to stick quite well. And I do have label, I have hundreds and hundreds of thermally printed tags and receipts that are from 15 to 19 years old from when I built my house. And every one of them look perfectly legible still. We'll see how these hold up. Okay, so these will be moved out of there. So now we're starting batch 638. It's another batch of peaches. It's one where I'm going to try to make it very similar to the one that I just showed that's going in my sister's freeze dryer, or that is in my sister's freeze dryer. It went in there yesterday. So let's go get the peaches and get them on the trays. Here's what was left on that one bag. So get those on there. And this is the big batch of peaches. So this will get spread out on the other, on all four trays. Again, I want two of them that have a pretty high amount on them. Let's start with that, see what we have. Okay, on a couple of the ones that I did in my sister's, it was even more full than that. So that's what I'll do on this. 1822, that should do it. That should be similar enough. 1822 for tray one. And get the thermometer tucked underneath so that it's in between a couple of layers. Tray two, same deal. But it would have helped if I'd cut the peaches more evenly too. Well, the next batch of peaches we do, we'll try to get them more even. Okay, 1808. These two trays hopefully can just be a single layer. Go ahead and spread these others out on part of them on this tray and part of them on that other tray. Okay, 1510. And they can tuck the thermometer under that piece of peach. So not a lot of difference between tray three and four. Very similar for one and two. So that's what we want. Okay, get that under there. Now these are ready for the freeze dryer. Let's move over there. All right, that's some good looking peaches. We'll get these loaded in real quickly, starting at the bottom. So this one has the least or almost the least number or amount of peaches. 
and then this one's the next least. I'm going to put it on the top. So they're not going to be in the normal order because these two trays, tray one and two, have the most peaches. So I'm putting those in the center two spots, which tend to be warmer. So it's the same way I loaded my sister's machine. Let's see, make sure we get a good ring around there. And we do, first try that time. With these pre-frozen and this pre-cooled, it only needs a few more hours before it'll be ready uh, to start the main cycle. Um, with peaches and sugary foods in general, it seems to take a little longer to freeze solid. And it's to be expected because sugary things have a lower freezing point. So it'll take a little while and then it'll get going. And then we'll be back in about two days. Right now it's been very, very hot where we live. And my sister's machine, well, she's just right next door to me. Uh, her machine seems to struggle less with these high temperatures in comparison to mine. In my basement, this is the hottest it's ever been. It's 75 to 80 in here, which is quite warm. So mine seems to be going a little bit slower. Hers seems to not be struggling as much. Uh, it could be that hers temperature is a little bit better where hers is, but it's similar. We'll find out how long the batch in hers takes in comparison to the batch in mine. They're loaded with a similar amount in a similar way. Uh, they're a day apart, but that's about all. According to her machine, it's going to be ready for the first dry check in just a couple more hours. We'll check up on that and this one when it's ready. So don't go away, it'll be just a second. The peaches in my sister's machine has been in there for about 26 and a half hours. It seems a little bit cooler right here and that does make a difference, though it does say that the room temperature is high and it may take longer. Uh, we're going to take them out for the first weight check and with hers I've noticed that uh, it doesn't turn off the heaters the last 15 minutes like mine does. So with mine the last 15 minutes the heaters are off and it's starting to cool. I don't know if that's good or bad. For some things I definitely like it to cool a little bit before I take them out. Some kinds of candies, uh, some kinds of sugary fruits because otherwise they stay pliable too much. But at the same time I don't want it to get cold and have to worry about condensation. So I don't know if this is ultimately a better or it's just different. It's definitely different but it seems to be fine. So we'll get the drain valve opened and get them out and check them for weight and put them back in for at least two more hours. And I'm going to give just a quick view of her freeze drying and bagging area. And so she would bought this desk storage thing, whatever this is, at the ReStore. We put wheels under it so we could move it if we needed to and it raises it up six inches because it was too low for us to work on. So it has pull-out drawers, which she has gloves and bags in, and then middle storage areas. You can put all kinds of goodies and more drawers on the other side. She has her various size bags and oxygen absorbers in, and then information. So on the top, she has plenty of room for the freeze dryer, the vacuum pump, and then a small work area, and then the vacuum or the heat sealer. And then we've added a clamped on little piece of wood here so you can't accidentally push this off the edge like I did on mine the one time. Okay, so we'll get them out and weigh them. And also I'm going to, because the air is blowing through here, I'm going to block the air here to make sure that it doesn't affect the scale because otherwise you can actually get an uplift and it'll lie to your scale because they're so sensitive. So I'll open the drain valve and starting with tray one which is one of the two middle racks and it's 840 and I am going to rotate them. I, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and rotate them. I'll put this one at the top spot where tray three currently is. I'll make sure that that's not touching underneath and it's fine. 
So this has 791, jumping up to two. So that one will come down a spot, and this one I'll put up a spot. Okay, and then tray two, and it's 850. And that's definitely not done, so I shouldn't even bother writing this down yet. But we'll track it and check it. But I'm sure they're not done, even though the thermometer is almost up to temperature. But it still wasn't quite there. And I'm going to leave this on this space because it needs more time, more heat than the bottom one. And this bottom one is always a little bit cooler and it is this time too tray four 768 okay all right we'll get that reclosed and restarted so close the drain valve we're gonna restart this it's 6 30 in the evening i think it's not going to be done which means i'm going to have at least two more times so when I do it the next time, it's going to have lost weight. Ah, and then I'll have to do it again. So, with that in mind, and I'm basing that on the fact that there was a couple of thermometers that hadn't made it to 120, and I could feel that they still felt a teeny bit cool. So, in order to not have to do it three times, I'm going to just give it a lot of time right now and then we'll come back tomorrow morning and check it and call that the dry check. I'll just simply, uh, if they would lost weight, I'll just erase these numbers that I just put on there and we'll start with fresh numbers. I have a feeling that they're all going to still lose weight. Peaches, when they dry, especially these nice thick slices, they act kind of like insulation and so the center areas still probably have some cool areas. In fact, let's check one of the thicker slices. We'll stuff a thermometer in it. See if we can do that. I don't know if we can, if they're too fragile or not. Okay, that kind of went in there. And the temperature does seem to be dropping. Okay. I'm going to restart that. I think I'll give it four or five hours, and, or six or eight hours. You can come back and check it tomorrow morning. Because I don't want to do it four times. Okay, so we're going to add more dry time. I did close the drain valve. Continue. And I'm going to add more time. Okay, wait for six hours. It may not need that much but I don't want to have to mess with it two or three more times. So we'll come back and check it first thing tomorrow morning. And by first thing, I mean maybe before noon. Okay, so I'll be back in just a minute on this one. So it's been overnight and I've rewarmed this. I turned this back on just a little over an hour ago, hour, eight and a half minutes ago. So it's rewarmed. The thermometers in the food said that it was about negative 40 when I restarted it. And you can see all the condensation on the outside. That's the part that the disc that I put in mine helps for, is really, it's only when it's just setting here for long periods of time. Uh, if you're always on top of it and you never let it run for 10, 15 hours in the non-vacuum mode, when it's under vacuum, then it really doesn't matter because there's no air in there to transfer the heat to the glass or the plastic, so it's, it's only radiant heat hitting here, so it's really not an issue. Uh, but when it's setting a long time, it can get a lot of water on that and on the seal. So right now we just have a little bit of the silver part wrapped around the seal, and I don't have a disc made for uh, this one yet, but that is the plan. Anyway, we'll bypass the rest of this time and get them weighed for our weight check. And we'll see if it did lose any weight overnight. If they didn't lose any weight, then they'll be ready to bag. But I'd be surprised if they didn't lose at least some weight. Going to use the down arrow and bypass the last few minutes of that. We'll open the drain valve and as soon as the pressures are equalized, we can open the door. I'm going to put this in here to 
block any of the air coming from the fan across the scale because that will make a difference. Now we'll get those out of there. So starting with tray one. Whoa! Yeehaw! Tray one is down by five more grams. So I am going to erase our numbers and start a new dry check set of numbers. It's kind of what I expected. So 835. I didn't feel any moisture and no ice or anything like that. Come on, get back in there. Okay. And I'll switch the shelf location to tray two. Make sure it's not touching that. 838. And that one had been 850, so that one dropped 12 grams off of that. That's two and a half teaspoons of water came out of that. I put this one, um, I'm gonna leave that one in this spot, but I'm going to move tray three. So tray three, this is one of the lighter ones, so it might have less. This one's gonna go up on the shelf spot two. Okay. So this was one of the lighter ones to begin with. 7.89, and that was 7.91, so it dropped two. And tray four, and that one is still noticeably cooler than the others. 7.68, and that's the only one that didn't drop any weight. So I'm gonna put this, this one up at the top space that will be a little bit warmer than at this spot. So I'll make sure the drain valve is closed. Move this back out of the way and we'll get it restarted with more dry time because it wasn't done. Okay, the dry check is all about finding out if it stopped losing weight. Has it lost all of the water it can? Has this removed all the water that it can remove? All of the ice, all of the bound water, all of the water that it can from the food to the cold traps. So what we're doing is checking to find out if it was dry before we checked it. So this two hours or three hours, I might give it three hours because I got a project to do with more peaches. Um, this is to find out if it stopped losing weight. If it doesn't lose any weight during this dry check, that means it's dry right now. And theoretically we could have bagged it, but there's no way to know for sure that it's dry right now. You can't tell by touching it because there still can be some bound water in it. You can't tell by a, a thermal camera because it can be warm and still have some moisture inside. Uh, weighing it is a simple way to tell, is it done losing weight? Is it done losing water? Okay, we'll get this restarted, add more dry time, continue. And I'm gonna bump this up to four hours, just in case I can't make it back. Uh, unlike mine, my machine, in the last 15 minutes, the heaters are off and it's starting to cool down. This one doesn't do that, so it doesn't really matter if I cancel time at the end, I don't get any benefit. The only thing you can do is cancel it all the way out, which will stop the vacuum also, and then it'll start to cool down. I actually like the other one better where it turns off the heaters for the last 15 minutes. Or it'd be nice if you could choose if the heaters are off or not. Okay, we'll come back later on this one. I'm back. It's three and a half hours later. Now we're going to take them out and check them. It's said that the, the little warm room uh, temperature th thing has been on the whole time because we've been having a heat wave here, kind of, uh, though it's starting to cool off at night again but this area has been the hottest it's ever been since we've been here. And it's still not very bad. It's only 75 range, so not too bad. Uh, where my machine is, I think it's been up to 80. And so it has been going a little bit slower, but it still seems to be doing just fine. And of course, mine's an older one with the older software, so it doesn't tell me any of those things. It just runs a little bit slower. It doesn't bother me at all. Uh, we'll get these stopped and check it. I'm going to use the down arrow so that it'll say process complete, but I won't shut it off until I've confirmed that indeed they've stopped losing weight in case I have to put them back in again. 
but they didn't lose a lot last time and so I don't really expect it to be a problem this time. So we'll open the drain valve and get them out. We'll get those out. So tray one. Okay. So 834. So that's down. It's showing one, but it was on the border last time. So we're going to check them all. So one and two were the biggest ones, the most likely ones to have a problem. We're going to go ahead and check it before we decide. Tray two. Actually, let's make sure it's zeroed where it's setting before we move on. Yeah, 834. And 838. So that one is no change. And this one's 834. And this has been four or three and a half hours. Okay, so I think we're going to be perfectly fine on those. Let's check tray three. And no change on that one. And I definitely have more space to work with than she does. And tray four. Okay, and no change. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn the machine off and then take care of these. No defrost. Make it quieter in here. Turn this fan off. Turn this fan off. Okay, and on hers, we have this for her little defrost baffle, which is a whole lot nicer than mine. And same kind of deal for the fan. Oops, except I have to turn it. And I'll wait to turn this on until we're done bagging because that's going to happen right here. Now we'll get the final weights by taking the thermometers out and then writing down those weights. Start with tray four still. And so the final weight is 759. And I'm going to put them into a very large zipper bag uh, so that they stay because this might take me a little longer to bag than mine normally do because I'm not set up here for what I'm used to. 781, 830, 825. This is a two gallon bag and that's pretty full. So we'll get the math on this batch and find out how much I need to put in each bag. I'm going to go print some labels and then we'll get back to these. And they're going to be for three quarters of a pound. Got my information, the date it went in, what it is, the fact that I'm going to bag them as three quarters of a pound. And I definitely could get a little bit higher in there, a little bit more, but the pieces are pretty big and so they don't nestle in there real well. And I need 10 labels. Oops, I forgot to turn it on. Turning it on might help. Oh, I'm gonna turn it on, it went, cool. Okay, and so I need five sets of these to give me 10 labels, then I'll cut them in half, because I'm just using half of one. I need almost 11 but the last one's going to be a different amount and I was thinking of just snacking on it. Four more copies and print. We'll cut these up and we'll go back to the bags. So 51 and three quarters grams for each bag. We'll just load those up and get them in there okay it's within a very small margin of error that's just about as close as you get normally so i've got three quarters of a pound of peaches before they were dried 
and now it's 51 and, and three quarters grams. So that will close and we'll do that after we get oxygen absorbers in. First, we'll get them all filled. I'm gonna do a half pound on that one. All right, so this one's a half pound. I didn't notice until I went to print that one more bag that half these labels are wrong. So I need to correct that. Ah, there they are. This, I need to change that to a J. That's how I'll handle it. I forgot to get rid of the six. I changed it to 83. That way I'll know that it came off my sister's machine or out of hers machine. And I won't be trying to find information for my old batch 83 from five years ago. Now we can get oxygen absorbers in those and get them ready to seal. So we're using the 300 cc oxygen absorbers and she has one bag that has seven in it and so i'll use those first to get rid of any partial bag and you can see the oxygen absorber uh, indicator turns dark blue or purplish color very quickly i really like those now these get tucked down the side of the bag so it's not in the zipper area and i'll move them over a bit so i don't lose my place Okay, and get these. I'm going to pull on the two ends and then seal across the middle because those are pretty full and I don't want to crush them. And if you vacuum packed the peaches, you're probably going to break some of them. Uh, so I'm not going to do that, but it wouldn't really hurt him. And vacuum packing or vacuum sealing is pretty good, but still. Don't forget the oxygen absorber. Even if you're vacuum sealing, you are leaving a teeny bit of oxygen in there, which will cause it to oxidize. And more importantly, for the long term, all of the bags are permeable. Moisture and oxygen will go through these bags over time. It may take years, but it is going to go through these bags and it is going to affect the contents. So by adding an oxygen absorber, you're going to take care of anything that does migrate through the bag. Okay, now this one, I need six out of, or four out of that, and that will leave six in the bag. So I'm going to go ahead and cross that out, take out the four, and then reseal this. And again, the indicator, you can see how fast it turns. And I'll put the other one back in with it. Take out the four I need. One, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. And as I mentioned before, we have this board clamped onto this edge so that this sealer doesn't accidentally go sailing off the end like mine did one time when I bumped it too hard. So get those, make sure that the uh, top of the bag is nice and smooth and get that down. Okay, and I'll let it cool for a couple seconds to make sure that it's re-solidified. And check, don't assume because it went through the process or through the motions that it actually works. So check. And we do on a regular basis, we take a strip of it and put it through there, seal it, and then pull it apart to make sure that it's functioning properly or try to pull it apart. Ideally, it will break instead of pulling apart. And I'm not sure where these are going to get stored. So I'll just put these back over on my bagging area until I get the next batch of peaches out of my machine. And then we'll look to see where these are going. We've got a good seal on the top edge of each bag and I've left enough room in case I mess up and it needs to be resealed. 
or if I want to just cut off the top edge and reseal it before it gets down to that tear uh, notch. So that's it on those. We'll be back and you'll see the other peaches. Well, probably next. Probably won't even take that. I can cut that out. Okay. Now we'll move on to the other peaches. All right, I'm back. The machine says that it's been going for about 47 and three quarters hours, but I know that it's actually only about 44 hours of dry time and maybe slightly less, but about 44 hours of dry time. And because I was just doing my sister's one and this one at the same time, I forgot where I was at. So I was thinking that this was coming out right now after the dry check and it was finished. I haven't done the dry check on this. I could have done this a few hours ago. I'd rewarmed it so that I could get them out and bag them thinking it was time to bag when it's actually only time for the dry check. So let's take them out, weigh them and put them back in. Ah, so I'll bypass the last few minutes of this because I'd added a bit of time to warm them back up because I'd let it stop and they were down to about 30, 40 degrees. 30 to 40 degrees in the fruit and that means the trays were cold enough to condense moisture out of the air. So I needed to warm them back up before I take them out so they don't have condensation. Now we'll open the drain valve and as soon as the pressure is equalized we'll get them out. So starting with tray one and this is one of the two that are very full 940 and it was dropping down one I'm going to double check the scale make sure it's zeroed out where it's setting I'm going to turn that fan off for a minute make sure it's not blowing air up there okay now double check that okay 939 I'm going to leave the middle two at those two spots Tray 2, 9.28, and then I will switch 3 and 4's position. This one's nice and toasty, 8.69, and Tray 4, and this is noticeably cooler, 8.76. Okay, and I'll put this one up on the top where it is slightly warmer than the bottom one and move this one down there so I've got them back in there and the drain valve is closed and like I said I have forgotten the timing I was thinking I was taking them out to bag them as opposed to the dry check now uh, we'll restart that and because of timing I'm going to give it four hours and then if I'm back before that I can stop it and check it. I like to do the dry checks with at least two hours but when the foods on there are pretty thick I like to give it more time three or four hours because you need time for that heat to transfer up through the tray and into the food or from the heater above down through it till it gets to that moisture level to cause it to sublimate out. Okay, so going to add more dry time. Drain valve is closed and continue. So I've given it four more hours. Now, it's about 44 hours right now. And if it doesn't lose any weight, the actual dry time is 44 hours or less because that means it's already done right now. We're just giving it this time to confirm that it's dry. So. I'll be back in just a second, so don't go away. I'm back. Uh, it's a good thing I gave it the four hours because I needed the full four hours to get back to it. In fact, it's down to just a minute and a half until it would have shut off by itself. That means on this particular model with this firmware, it's been cooling for almost 15 minutes. So the temperatures are starting to drop, but it's still plenty warm to be safe to take them out without condensation. So I will I'll skip the last of this. Then we'll open the drain valve. 
and with the pressure equalized we can get it open so starting with on tray one and there's no change perfect that's exactly what we want from every tray is no change and no change on that tray three and tray three the one on the bottom is starting to get cool but it's still warm enough that it shouldn't be any issue it's the same no change it's one thing I'd found before is that it's so sensitive I need to make sure I turn off any other fans if there's any air going under it will actually lift up enough to change it up to two or three grams so I have to make sure I turn off the cooling fans that are near it so I don't get that airflow okay, tray four and it's good also we'll get these moved over to the bagging area and come finish the machine so I'll turn the machine off using no defrost boy it makes it so much quieter you know get the baffle in place and the defrost fan in place and I use the fan for defrosting because I don't like to use the tray heaters to warm up the whole barrel and melt the ice that way you can do it that way and it is faster that way but it does leave a warm moist environment in there and if you're not right on top of it and take care of it right away you could be putting the perfect conditions for mold and mildew in there um, I'm not really interested in doing that we use the fan and then we have the fan blowing in there for at least two or three days if we're not going to use the machine or as soon as it's defrosted we would start it up right away and it's still slightly cool or at least it's not above room temperature by the time we restart it whereas if you use the tray heaters you could be getting it significantly warmer than that anyway there's nothing wrong with using the defrost uh, system I just like using the fan as my way of defrosting it now we know that it was dry before this extra time so I'm going to use 44 hours as my how long did it take to dry time now we'll get the power usage so the power usage for that batch was approximately 32.36 kilowatt hours now reset it and it'll be ready for the next batch we'll get the thermometers removed from these and get the final weights after they've been dried these are three of the bags from that last batch uh, from my sister's machine and I just want to share with you what they look like what the labels look like after they've been sucked down uh, the oxygen absorbers have done their job so they seem to conform very well they're not peeling up and so it looks like it'll do well and a lot of people have mentioned a lot of times that the thermal labels don't hold up over long term and that I am concerned about the thermal labels holding up however I started building the house I'm in 20 years ago and built it over about a five-year period I have hundreds and hundreds of receipts with hundreds of them being thermal prints and other instructions and things that are thermal prints and I went through that file I every one of them is still legible most of them still look pristine so I know thermal labels can go bad I don't know how these are going to hold up long term ideally I would love to have either a thermal transfer type print or a laser print but I'd like it in the same kind of form factor as this thermal printer and a similar price and until then I'll just use these and I'll make sure I write the label number or the batch number on the bag that way if these fail or when they fail I have all the information in my notes that I can reconstruct all the information so I'm not going to be out and not knowing what's in the bag we'll get all the thermometers removed from these trays and get the final dry weights now so tray one is 931 now and tray 2 919 tray 3 861 and tray 4 
866. These batches were hand cut and were very thick and a lot of variation in thickness. The next batch I did, which is already in the freezer waiting its turn, I used the Spam Slicer on most of them to get a more even, thinner slice. So in this batch, I'm going to go with three quarters of a pound in each bag, except the last bag will end up with a half pound. So let's get some labels made for these. These are just beautiful. Now, cut those in half and use those on the bags. So this is how I'm labeling the bag. I've got the batch number written up at the top in felt pen. So in case this label fails before we use this, I can refer back to this number and I have all the information. I'm going to combine a couple of these so I can get a scale in here and get them weighed. So I'll tear out a bag on there. So zeroing it out. And then I've got the scoop that I widened out slightly. I think I'll do it more on the next one. So we need about 73 and a quarter grams. So 73.2 grams per bag to equal three quarters of a pound. So just kind of scoop up some of them. Shake them down. Oh, not after 73. 73, that would be the whole pound. I need approximately 50, just under 55. So I need just under 55 for three quarters of a pound. 73 was for the whole pound. So on some of them, they're going to be slightly low, but if I can get within a half a gram or so, I think I'll be pleased with that. Okay, so there's three quarters of a pound before drying weight, of course, and that will close. Wow, this is like sugars from the peach. Okay, so there should be about a half pound left. Let's test that with this scoop. I'll tear that out. Put them on the scoop. And then weigh it. So in a half pound would be about 36 grams. It looks like I get to eat two of them. So that's just right at, just barely over a half pound. So I had one of them that I changed the label to a half pound. And then these are my, these are for me snackings. Those are really delicious peaches. Now, the oxygen absorbers. And as usual, I'm using 300cc oxygen absorbers. You can see this is one that I'd opened before and the little oxygen indicator turns kind of a purple color. And then after being back in here for a few hours, it goes back to the salmon or pink color. And as soon as I open it again, and the oxygen hits it, try to keep it in view, you can see it rapidly goes back to the purplish, bluish color. So I'll tuck this down the side get these zippered shut so I'm just pulling on the two ends the two sides pulling them shut and you could vacuum seal these using like a chamber vac vacuum system but I don't really like to crush most of my things and these are a little bit fragile but not as much as some of the things so these would hold up pretty well to being vacuum packed I would still always use an oxygen absorber in with the food, even if I'm vacuum sealing. And I don't have a chamber vacuum, so I don't, I can't even do that. I'll open another bag and take three of them out, which will leave seven, and I've already written that on there. Then I'll reseal this bag. If you grab a new bag of these and that sensor is not the color it's supposed to be, assume that all of the oxygen absorbers in that bag are bad and you can test one and I'll show you how we're testing them uh, later in a different time. Now get all these heat sealed 
And I'm using an Impact brand sealer. This is what they used to send out with the Harvest Rites. Now they have their own branded ones. I have no idea who makes them or, or what they are internally. Uh, but this is what they used to send out. This is my second one because I accidentally pushed the first one off the edge of the table. It hit the concrete and it broke. But I've used this brand for decades and I've been real happy with them. I know at least one person has said that they got one and it didn't work for them. Um, I'm not going to recommend or not recommend any type. If the one that you have works, great. But test it to make sure that it works. Don't just assume that it's working. Okay, on mine, underneath the heat strip and tape, it's just metal. So it soaks up a lot of heat when it first starts. So my first bag, I like to do it twice. It's done. I'm doing it a second time to make sure that it's up to temperature. Then I'm waiting a few seconds while it cools just a bit and then done. I try to seal it as high up on the bag as I can. That way I've got room for multiple tries in case something goes wrong. And as usual, I'm going to add the one more step of weighing each bag and writing the gross weight of the bag on the bottom edge of the bag. So this bag weighs 79 grams right now as it sits. If it starts to get heavier, that means something went wrong. The bag has a hole in it. The seal is bad. Uh, it's a bad quality bag. Something like that. Something went wrong and is allowing moisture to get in so it becomes heavier. Is the bag bad? So that's all I'm using that for. So we'll get that weight on each bag and then they'll be ready for storage. So each of these bags, except the half pound one, have about 55 grams of fruit in there. So if it became two grams heavier, so if this one became 81 grams, that would mean two grams of, of moisture or some weight, and it's most likely moisture, got into there. Two grams out of 55 would be 4% moisture by weight. That's a bad thing to get that much. These are ready for storage now, and we'll show you the whole storage thing later. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more peaches.